Hi everybody, Keith Roy here from the Vancouver Unreal Estate Show Remax Agent in Vancouver. We've been getting a lot of questions and so we've brought Stephanie in who's gonna answer some and ask some. Go ahead and introduce yourself. My name is Stephanie Arnold. I do some marketing on Keith's team and I am a marketing consultant and I produce the Vancouver Unreal Estate Show. The producer of the Vancouver Unreal Estate Show here in person. I know you're used to hearing my voice on the podcast, but we're gonna do this I'm in person the, for I'm you. On the, I'm on the podcast too. Stephanie's on the podcast every you once in a while too. You talk about me a lot. Yeah. I make it sound good. All right. Um, so we wrote a blog about a year ago, uh, a couple months after we first released the podcast, kind of our how we started the podcast thing. Since then, we've had a lot of questions about uh, how we run the show, what equipment we use, what we've learned. So it's been over a year we've been doing it now. We wanted to do a quick update uh, for everybody that maybe followed the first blog post, or even if you didn't, but you're thinking about starting a real estate podcast, uh, we're going to give you some tips. So. Yeah. So the obvious question. What was the obvious question? You were going to ask all the questions. The obvious question is, what is what have been some of the biggest challenges you faced? Sure, that's the obvious and, question. Well, you know, everybody wants to know, like, what's in front of me? How much work is this going to be? And mm -hmm. what I would tell you is, if you're just getting started out and, you know, you're a, a new realtor, you're thinking this might be a thing for you, it's a really tough thing to start with a podcast. This takes up a lot of our time. And one of the keys that we learned is you have to produce the podcast every single week. And we did it for 42 weeks in a row mm -hmm. last year. Every week I found someone new to interview, someone new to talk to, uh, lots it's of not conversations. It has to be every week. It just it has to be consistent. Yeah. In the beginning, I still think it needs to be every week in the beginning because mm -hmm. you got to build that listenership up. Yeah. And now that we're in year two, we've moved it to a bi-weekly format. Mm -hmm. So it's happening every two weeks. I think that's what bi-weekly means. I guess. Um, so we're every two weeks now and we've maintained our listenership and we think we're bringing a better quality interview. We're getting better quality people. We're not always scrambling mm -hmm. for, that, for that last minute person. Yeah. So now that we've been doing it a year, is there anything you'd say you would have done differently? Yeah, I think the biggest thing that we would have done differently was probably invest in some better equipment right off right, right out of the that. gate but yeah. it's really expensive and we didn't know if, if it was we, gonna be successful yeah. we're going with it how long we we're gonna run with yeah. it but the the equipment has caused some frustration because i produce a sound quality that stephanie doesn't like and then mm -hmm. she has to edit it and it's this back and forth and then it's like well we need new microphones and i want a different device and mm -hmm. so that's been a bit of an ongoing challenge so i would suggest if you're gonna do it commit to it mm -hmm. i'd also suggest that you commit to some of the advertising at the beginning and have a better website that's what uh if, if you're gonna ask me what i would have done differently it would have been more in launching the podcast from the beginning making it a bigger deal i would have released multiple episodes all at once when we first launched it we only had the first episode um once if we would have gotten more so that if somebody listens to the podcast they think i really like this i can now go and download more also the way iTunes works or on Apple Podcasts, you only have, I think it's eight weeks to get in the new and noteworthy section of, of iTunes. Which we did not. We did not. We didn't do that. <laughs> and how you get there is a mix of reviews and downloads. We did get a lot of reviews, which was awesome, but we didn't get the download amount. There's no like per exact amount. We don't know what it yeah. is, but it's, but it's based on that. And so if you have more episodes all bunched together, that equals more downloads. So that's what I would have done. Yeah. There. Bigger, bigger launch in the beginning would have been yeah. And I have great. in this blog, this is attached to a blog. I've got yeah. all of the technical stuff in here too. So all the equipment that we use, all the equipment that I, I want to be using. And that's the stuff we're using with Chris already. Um, so all that kind of techie stuff is in this. Yeah. And you'll find on some of our episodes, we have a regular guest, which is an interesting tip. Mm -hmm. um, always have a guest that you can kind of fall back on. So I'm a fairly conservative guy. We've got a friend. He's a uh, He's a former tax lawyer. He's now an investigator with the BC Securities Commission. He's also a little more centrist, maybe left-leaning than I am. So mm -hmm. on the politics of real estate, we get into a good back and forth. And the benefit of that is it makes for good conversation. Mm -hmm. But on the weeks when maybe we had a guest, they were confirmed, I was gonna interview them on Wednesday or Thursday, podcast comes out on Sunday, that guest cancels, something comes up, and all of a sudden, 
I'm scrambling to find a guest. Mm -hmm. So there has been a few weeks where we've fallen back on the regular. There's also been some weeks where we've done two to three interviews at a time, and then we're releasing them into the future if they're yeah. not time sensitive. That's what I love doing. Yeah. <laughs> it's tough because you travel a lot and you're busy working. It's a spring market, um, so you get busy. So if whenever possible to have episodes banked is really great, but you have to be careful then that you aren't, uh, be, you, they're kind of have to be evergreen. You can't say things like last Tuesday because yeah you might be releasing in a couple weeks. And I have a background in political science, so a lot of what we talk about on the podcast is the politics and the policies mm -hmm. surrounding real estate. Our listenership is an odd mix of realtors, clients, general public, and here's a great tip, the audience of our guest. So we've had different people on the show. We had, mm -hmm. um, he's now the Attorney General in the province of British Columbia, David mm -hmm. Eby. We had the former mayor of Vancouver, the mayor of one of the suburbs. Mm -hmm. So we've a uh, city councilor in Vancouver. So we found people that have their own audience and they've been able to share the podcast with their audience. Mm -hmm. One of our most well listened to episodes was our Hawaii episode with our Hawaiian realtor, Kevin Wamsley. Kevin was so excited to be on the show and he shared the episode with all of his friends and family and clients. And so asking your guests to, to share with their audience really increases your, your listenership. Um, who do you think, so you mentioned briefly who our audience is. Yeah. Is that who you thought our audience would be when we started the show? Well, the, uh, the intention for me was to get some political profile in the city and to get some, get our own new following and audience. I love talking about real estate policy mm -hmm. and all, there, you know, if you follow politics in British Columbia and real estate politics in particular, it's the biggest conversation that's going on in this province. And it has been for three to five years, like the top of mind for everybody. You go out for dinner, it's all people want to talk about. So I found I was having these conversations with a lot of people by having the podcast, I could point people there. I figured the audience would just kind of be political geeks like me. Mm -hmm. And it is some of that. It's a lot of our client base as well, yes. which has been super interesting. So I've got clients that I've bumped into and maybe I haven't seen them in you know a year. They haven't come to our events. They haven't answered the phone calls when we've reached out. And they'll say, hey, how was your trip to Chile? And I'm like, how did you know I went to Chile? But they had listened to the podcast where we interviewed uh, the director of global development for Remax in, in, Chile. in Chile while I was down there speaking. And what was interesting about that is the people that listen to the podcast feel like they're with you and they feel like they're part of the conversation even though you weren't there mm -hmm. you know uh, i learned this from a marketing book if you're watching television terry o'reilly terry o'reilly's book yeah mm -hmm. when you're watching um he hosts uh, a show on cbc under the influence under the influence a marketing a marketing show on cbc uh so what he said is when you're watching tv there's a barrier between you and the person you're watching tv a with literal so, barrier and you watch tv with other people Whereas podcasting and radio, you tend to listen to that alone in your car. So you feel much more connected to the person you listen to on your drive to work. You feel like you know them because they're part of your daily life. They're mm -hmm. part of your daily routine. Whereas the newscaster, Peter Mansbridge or whoever's hosting the news that night, you feel a bit of a separation from them. And with podcasting, it's the same thing. So you get to go into people's lives and they really feel connected to you. They know what's going on with you. They understand you better. And when you meet them in person, they'll be much more amenable to a conversation with you uh, then maybe even you will be mm -hmm. because you're trying to catch up on the basics and they're they're well past the basics because they've been with you the whole time so it's allowed us to really connect with our database mm -hmm. a lot of what we do is repeat and referral and that's worked really well for generating a little more um, credibility in there so along the lines people who are watching this are probably in real estate thinking about starting a podcast the, let's talk about the numbers. Can you say that this has done anything positive for your business? I cannot point to a single person who has done business with us as <laughs> a result of, of me hosting the podcast. Okay. But what I can say is it's it's added some credibility to the database. Mm -hmm. It's created some new relationships with some of the interviews I did. Mm -hmm. um, you're able to give legitimacy to the people you interview and therefore they give you know, in, in turn, they feel you're legitimate. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of people know you can just start a podcast on your own. So yeah. other realtors, um, you know, ref building referrals from other realtors, mm -hmm. that's been part of it. We have increased our referrals. We did increase our referrals last year. And yeah, that, that's an I overall that's, package yeah. um, that drives a couple of those things, mm -hmm. but that it's, it's all part of our branding around me as a realtor, me as a speaker, mm -hmm. uh, me as a referral based realtor. Um, and a, a civically minded community involved Vancouverite. 
uh, I want to turn to you and talk about how much does this all cost me? Because <laughs> podcasting's not free, and I I don't really know what's going on. Like what I just sure. like having my own show, and I'm I'm willing to pay anything <laughs> to have my own show. So the equipment was a, a, I mean we used basic lav mics. They weren't that much money. I mean we probably spent like three hundred bucks on equipment when we first started. Um, you pay a monthly subscription to host your podcast. We use a, a company called Blueberry. Uh, I think that's about fifty or sixty bucks a month. That's the only subscription thing that we have. Uh, the other cost would be some marketing. We do run some Facebook ads for our podcast more at the beginning just to kind of build the awareness yeah. but but now we maybe spend 50 bucks a month now and who do we advertise to it depends on the episode yeah. the audience is different every time if we're if we're interviewing a city councilor we had the Vancouver by-election we interviewed two different city councilors so I advertised those and I advertised those two people in Vancouver who might be aligned with different political parties based on interests things like that often I will target realtors because that's a huge uh, our, our listeners are a yeah. lot of realtors yeah um, and we'll also so we'll target the audiences of the people who we have on the show. Mm -hmm. We'll target our database. Mm -hmm. And it's a nice way to mix up the ads to your database. It's not always a call to action for yeah. real estate. I use it a lot. You're right. To add, we like to do we run ads to our database. We've uploaded our database uh, into Facebook. We run yeah. ads to the database. But the ads we run to the database are never like buy a house with us or refer businesses. No. They're always just like straight up value, um, which might be the podcast, it might be a blog, it might be a market update. And yeah. so people like seem to- appreciate Yeah, if, if you've heard me train before, I always talk about, you know, bringing value, bringing value to the people that you're, you're looking for referral business mm -hmm. from. Well, the podcast is a great way to bring a really in-depth level of value to those people mm -hmm. if you've got a good message and good interviews. So who should start a podcast? You know, I think if you're in a market where there isn't a podcast, there's a huge opportunity for you. We are in a market where there is. Yeah, and, and we still went after those we guys. It, you know, there's a show called the Vancouver Real Estate Show. We run the Vancouver no, Un Real no, Estate it's Show. It's the Vancouver Real Estate Podcast. The Vancouver Real Estate Podcast. You shouldn't listen to it. You should listen to ours. Don't, don't even worry about the name. So um, we do, it is a little different than theirs, but yeah. Yeah, it, we have, we tend to have different people and a different messaging. There's, I find is a little more on the sales side. Mm -hmm. Ours is more on the policy side. Which there is a little more broad based. So we, we've got like a niche, like very, very highly intelligent yeah. <laughs> political junkies listen to our show. Yeah. And I talk to those guys and they're in our market. I do deals with them. Yeah. And I, I, I said, Hey, like, how's the podcast going there? Like, you know, when we heard <laughs> that there was another podcast coming, we were not really worried worried because we know how much work it is but then we found out it was keith roy's podcast and we were like it's your show right i can swear on this show yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, they were like oh shit it's keith roy <laughs> he's gonna follow through on this and i have and we have a good relationship yeah we went at it for a couple weeks with google ads oh we were we were both bidding on the same adwords and we it, we were like vancouver real estate podcast they were bidding on it we were bidding on it and we kept over bidding each other so the words it, you, it started off as like 10 cents or something a click and it got up to like 10 dollars a click and so then there was a while where we both Everybody shut it down we were like this gone too far we were let's spending, stop fighting each other we are spending too much money it was, on this it was ridiculous but um, we don't so, actually spend a lot of money on it anymore no so to your to your question who should start a podcast if yeah. you're in a market that doesn't have one there's an opportunity uh keep in mind it's not a direct revenue generator no. um for i would say a long time and because building that listenership and real estate i mean we love talking about we're realtors Politics is interesting. You got a really limited segment of the population mm -hmm. that you can go after. Uh, but it, again, if there's not someone in your market, there's an opportunity there for you. Um, if it's something that you have a passion for, you Stephanie sure. really likes doing the sound editing, the tech side. She's learned it. I love interviewing people and um, having people. You know, I love talking and having people listen yeah. to me. But if so, if you either are somebody who really likes the tech stuff, if you have an audio editing background, you want to do that stuff. Sure. Otherwise, I would say you have to outsource it because to figure it all out on your own. I knew about this stuff, and it still was a, a learning process. Yeah. Um, so yeah. if you have an assistant or there are companies that you can hire, I've looked into some outsourcing options. Yeah. I can put, like and link those in this blog too. Yeah. So, you know, we've got lots of information for you. We're yeah. here to help you, um, as realtors, you know, we appreciate all the referral business we've gotten over the years yeah. from the real estate community, um, across Canada and the States. And, and let's give a plug. You know, if you've got, if you've got clients moving to Vancouver, we're happy to help. But at the same time, uh, we want to help you. So if you want to start a podcast, you want more information about this, reach out, we'll help you. 
uh, Stephanie does social media consulting and uh, real estate coaching. She has the back end of a real estate practice all sorted out. So she can help you there. Uh, and I've also said I've got a bunch of templates that I've made for this podcast as well. I've got my email right below this. So send me an email if you want any of those templates and I will shoot those off to you. Yeah. And if you want to start a podcast, uh, we, let us know. Let us know and we can uh, we can appear on the show. We can yeah. We can give you the information you need. And, and uh, like I said, if you need anything else from us, just reach out information below. Thanks for, uh, thanks for watching the video and we look forward to helping you in the future. Stay classy, San Diego. No. <laughs>